we say we are on seed, if, you, can, you know exactly what kind of a fruit or veg you are growing. This is the your one, it's unique, it's organic waste. Mm. You, didn't, you didn't use any chemical or anything for saving seed. So if you go more, then you can share with other people. London, computer scientists will connect with local gardeners over one growing season. The researchers will build environmental sensors and an interactive seed library. Could technology help to share knowledge about seed saving in the city? Hi, my name's Sarah. Sarah Heitlinger. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Queen Mary University of London and I'm working on this Connected Seeds project. I'm investigating how technology can support more sustainable food growing in the city. I'm not a gardener, I don't have a connection to gardening, but I just sort of fell into this project at the farm as part of my first year on the PhD project. Do you want to come and put this back in the polytunnel with me, Nancy? Come. Being at the farm has been really great because oftentimes I can bring my kids to the farm and they can just play while I'm documenting the gardens or talking to people or things like that. So I think that's been really great. I have a background in computer science. That was my first degree. And then I worked as an artist for many years and I was using the skills that I had from computer science to work with communities. So that's really where my passion was, working with communities and doing socially engaged art projects. I'm Nick Brian Kins and I'm lead of the Connected Seas project and we're making a uh, Internet of Things system that will allow us to collect information about seeds and their growing conditions and also collect people's stories and sharing that with people around the community. Everything these days could be connected to the internet. So that's why it's called the Internet of Things, because it's just the internet of everything. So in our case it's like sensors that sit in the ground, come together with uh, stories of people's uh, lives, of why they grow this crop, come together with recipes, come together with photos and images, all together in one place. <laughs> And so we're really just investigating how technology can really inspire people to grow their own food and celebrate the diversity of kind of food growing practices in the city. I'm really excited to see what it's going to turn into and how people are going to receive it and how it's all going to fit together. There's a lot of elements to come together. Hello, my name is Nanda Karapapong. I'm an engineer of Connected Seed Project, designing, building, and testing all the hardware and software. I built a sensor unit to be put in people's gardens. It will be used to collect environmental data over a few months. It can measure air and soil temperature, humidity, light, and also air pressure. My technology is craft. So we're in the east end of London, we're about 200 metres from Brick Lane. We're about half a mile from the city of London, we're about half a mile from Whitechapel. So we're bang in the middle of some of the richest and some of the poorest people in Europe. I've always been interested in Sarah's work, even if I don't entirely understand it, because it's very IT related, which is not sort of like my first love. Um, but I, and, but it's sort of like the spirit behind her work. I've always been very, very interested in. 
I just, I'm just very, very bad with technology, so I avoid technology where possible. Yeah. Sorry, is that what I was going to say? Um, I'm, no, I'm, no, really it's excited. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> Slowly I'm learning about technology. But so far I understand this one going to be major moisture, temperature and light and um, Maybe they will explain me how much light I need for my garden or how moist or temperature is a high or low. I made 17 units in total, with the help of a few students. Already things like we've noticed the Callaloo is really not thriving this July and it would be we'd expect it to be much bigger and I just wonder if actually if we had that box this year and last year when it was thriving if we'd notice a difference in the weather. So can you see a use for this kind of information? Now that we're just having that conversation yeah it would be quite intriguing wouldn't it to have that information. To compare with yeah. previous years. Yeah. Because it's very, it's very subjective, your perception of what was a wet year, what was a hot year, what was a cold year. <laughs> Every year I'm learning something. Something is different. Yeah. So it's like um, the coriander. Last year they didn't grow that big. Why this year it grow so nicely? I don't understand. Because is it that's because of they grow automatically or something in the soil. I don't understand that. I've emailed all the participants. Our gardener Joe has unfortunately left to live on the other side of London and there's not really anyone to take his place. Sorry I didn't reply to your email because my plants didn't grow well, half plants die. And then another lady, her father is ill in Bangladesh, she's gone for the summer to Bangladesh. Another guy says chickpeas are not doing well. I will replace chickpeas with something else. Okay, we're in July already. So, you know, we do, it's, it's very uh, uncertain. We don't know. We don't know. Some people's plants might just all die. So after collecting the data for about three months, we worked with a data visualisation company to try and understand the data that we collected. So this is uh, the website that we have so far for the visualisation. It's maybe 70% finished. And if we look at Halima's garden, we can see the light sensor, and then we can see the air temperature, air humidity, and so on. And we can get it to play back the data over time. So it's quite interesting that just from the data, you can uh, get some idea of what is happening in that growing environment, and you can compare it to other things. And what happened at this bit where we, we don't get any more data is this where it actually got stolen, for example. We had put one of the recording boxes in here. When we came back, it was gone. Somebody came and took it, as well as they cleaned my beans, cleaned my broad beans. <laughs> it doesn't have anything that is of value to somebody who's not uh, part of the project, basically. Because it's got a set of specialized sensors, but on their own, they're kind of useless. Uh, they're only useful once you have the once you have the whole system uh, up and running. I wouldn't have thought anyone would have seen it, but that means that someone's deliberately gone over to the bed. They've rummaged through it to find it. Yep. The balotis are gone. I was leaving it to dry. They are all gone. Well, at the beginning of the year, I had twelve beetroot that were almost ready, and they took the whole lot in one go. So that's horrible. Have you called the police over this? 
Yeah, 12 mustn't be boobs. <laughs> they just about tolerate me calling them when I find a knife, let alone my feature going missing. <laughs> Right. I was home for the last about two and a half weeks. I just came back. That is what I left it looking like three weeks ago. And this is what I came back to. One's dead. Yeah. So I'm not a happy bunny. Will you be able to save seeds from this? I doubt that. If I, if I can't get it to flower. Look at you. You're going to hide, aren't you? Yes, you're going to hide. For me, it's like, say my own seed. I know how it's the taste and things. Like coriander, I know that some coriander is no smell at all. And the coriander I grow is quite nice scented smell. So that's why I put my seed again and again to the same one and I can grow real. Saving your own seeds, it, I suppose it takes, you're taking control over your own varieties. It's really satisfying to actually increase your level of self-sufficiency by completing the whole plant life cycle. One thing that we identified was there was all this collective knowledge about food growing, really rich, diverse knowledge present in East London and particularly at the farm. But it was really difficult to access this information and share this information. So together with the farm community, we came up with an idea of making a seed library that would somehow collect and make available to others all this information about food growing and seed saving. At the end of the day, many people do gardening and many people plant things and grow things because for them it's a symbol of life it's important to capture that as part of the data collection that we do. And one of the efforts that we do is actually trying to collect memories of individuals, pictures that uh, they might have taken to understand how have they personally related to the growth of this specific plant in their house or these specific seeds that they've planted. When I grow my, myself, my food, I am really happy. Gardening has changed uh, my life before I shy. Now this gardening give me more confidence and yeah, come out and <laughs> talk to people. Part of our aims were to design something that's very intuitive and very simple and very easy to use because a lot of the people that we anticipate coming to the seed library are not very technologically savvy and maybe don't own mobile phones and things like that. So what we wanted to do was to design a system, an interactive system that would be very intuitive and very easy for anybody to use and would really sort of draw people in and engage them in a playful way. Science project, I think, have to be very creative, like art, you know, it's not a bit different. I was inspired with the Marcel Duchamp portable museum and it's like some very strange like hocus pocus like open and open and open and open and I said maybe we can use his idea for the seed library. You know? So this is the seed library. It's got seeds inside and stories from the people who grew them. So we've got all these different varieties of seeds that have been grown by our guardians and say we wanted to learn about this particular seed, we want to know what it is and who grew it. My name is Halima Begum. I came from Bangladesh and I love to do gardening. <laughs> and if you want to learn about how to grow coriander? They grow nicely and they are more scented in summertime. I feel so happy, yeah? so relaxed. <laughs> Fry onion and garlic and oil. Then fry mixed spices, a little bit of water to make a paste.
seed library was made from laser cut plywood components. Many days were spent in the laser cutting lab in the basement of the university. It took lots of trial and error to get it exactly right. So the tech doesn't work in completely as I want it to. We were up till midnight last night <laughs> trying to finish it and then I was like absolutely sleepless last night trying to think of all the things I had to do. Work. And what are you what are you guys saying now? <laughs> we are talking about Kalalo. We don't know we are not sure. It's oh, Dugi. Yeah, oh the same thing. Yeah. It's Kalalo. Richard was, Richard was growing Kalalo. Yeah, but we call them Dugi. Oh, That's why you're confused. What is it? <laughs> That's really nice. Okay. Hello, my name is Richard Walker and I'm a community gardener at Spiritual Field City Farm. Love looking at other people. It's really, really nice. It's really exciting. Yeah. So what do you think the most useful thing about this seed library is? Information. It's like um, what I noticed that even you know things, that name is different. It's like a clear information. What is it actually? It's picture and the details. I'm really passionate about how people interact with new experiences. The technology for me is not uh, important. Uh, what's actually interesting is how people respond to the, f the new things that we design, the new kind of ways of interacting and experiencing the world. You don't often get a chance to hear all those stories come together and so I think that's what the technology has allowed us to do. So do you guys feel a bit proud to have been having your information in here? Yes, yes. I see it's really different to see you. my voice is really <laughs> happy. It's really different with yes, other people, <laughs> other person. Talking. That's good. That's nice. It is a basic resource to put in place if we do want food growing to become more and more important in this area. So yeah, no, I think the seed library is completely amazing. We are dependent on the climate. We are dependent on farmers. You know, we, we are dependent on so many things to get our food. It doesn't just come off a supermarket shelf and that's it. I think the projects have been really great. I've been really happy with the outcomes. And although we've had a lot of challenges, these are the things that uh, I think academic research is about, finding out what the difficulties are, figuring out how we're going to overcome them, and then sharing that information with other people. Too often academic research is about the papers as the output, but in this one it's about people and, and seed growing in a way is, it, is the output. This is the one. There's some on this side. This is one of the Pak Choi pods that we harvest from the ones outside. I'm just going to see what we, if we were lucky enough to get any seed. Yes! Aha! Look at that! Yes, 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 yes! I got seeds! 